Hello and welcome again. My name is Tim Moody. I am the Public Information Officer with the Randolph County School System. I am here with our Superintendent, Dr. Stephen Ganey, and as we do each month, uh, with the help of Randolph Communications and MyTV1, we present from the desk of, and it gives us the opportunity to get out in front of our community and share with you some of the great things that are going on in the Randolph County School System. Uh, Dr. Ganey, um, not only in our last interview, but in some previous interviews, we talked a lot about uh, the accreditation process that our school system undergoes every five years. Well, it all came to fruition this week. This was a big week. The advanced ed folks were here in town to perform the external review. And uh, there's a lot to say about that. So I know you want to at least touch on that a little bit. Yes, Tim, it was an exciting week. Um, uh, we have now completed the process. Uh, it's been a lot of pieces of the process started as much as a year ago, but we did have some external visitors to the uh, school system. They visited some schools. Uh, they talked to central office staff. Um, uh, just exciting to bring some, you know, some outside eyes in to see what we're doing as a school system and, and get some feedback from them. We have received, received some positive feedback. We received some areas that we need to work on. And it was just, it was, there was a lot of excitement around it actually this, this week. Um, there was a time where uh, community members were here being interviewed by them. Parents, there was a parent group interviewed. Um, uh, they talked to our board and it's just exciting to uh, see it from me, seeing all the different groups. You know, you think about these groups having an influence on our school system, but then an event like this really reinforces that. And um, we're really proud of our school system. We know we uh, have room for improvement. What I told the uh, committee on multiple occasions uh, during the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday visit of this week was um, I think there's a huge upside to this school system and, and um, uh, looking forward to being a part of that and, and, and seeing where our school system goes. Uh, very talented external team that came in. Um, there was a former superintendent, multiple members of, uh, of multiple former principals were on that team. Um, everybody or a lot of people at this point on that team were had moved to central service positions if I'm remembering right at least one was still a principal um, but just very talented group so very excited um, to have them here and uh, you know we had people from South Carolina here some people from North Carolina here and we had had one individual from Kentucky and um, just to um, have them put their eyes on our school system and give us feedback was a was a, a Great experience, and I want to, you know, I do appreciate Kat Berry, mm -hmm. Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum Instruction. She led this process. Our principals did a great job. Our school staff did a great job. Directors, you were very involved. This has been this has been at least a year long process, and um, but I'll remind you what I what I've told several groups about uh, accreditation with through Advanced Ed. When it gets down to it, it's all about the kids. Mm -hmm. Accreditation has a lot to do with the experiences the children are going to have in our school system uh, now and for the next five years and, and even into the future beyond that when we get into the next accreditation window. So uh, it is all about the kids and and I just um, it was a it was a good experience. It was a lengthy experience, but um, uh, it's one that we uh, it, it'll provide some recognition for our school system and it's uh, well deserved for the staff that um, helps every day to run the school system. So the advanced ed visit was uh, the highlight of this week, but if we could go back to last week and specifically last Monday night, March 7th, uh, our annual capital outlay presentation to the county commissioners. And uh, if you could just share with us some of the uh, results of that. Well, um, last Monday night on, um, I guess it was the 7th of March, I did present our capital outlay needs, and these are the long-range capital outlay needs. We do that once a year in March with the commissioners, and as I've told you many times, I enjoy interacting with our commissioners. Um, you know, one of the things I want us to continue to work on is I want the public to trust us. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's my position to ever say when we've gained that trust. We've got to keep working at it and increase the level of trust with the public. and and. So every time we have that opportunity to share, share our needs, I enjoy that, but I also enjoy uh, being able to uh, share why they're our needs. And, and so we did share with them how our long-range capital outlay needs have changed a little bit from last year this time, last year. 
We had two needs that we thought were uh, pretty urgent. Well, we had three, but two of them have now fallen off the list a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, last year's time, we thought we needed a new wing at uh, Southeast Randolph Middle. Uh, since that time, it is uh, the, the student numbers have gone down a little bit, so we can kind of put that on hold. We also thought last year this time that we were going to be headed towards needing a new elementary school in the Randleman area, but now some things have shifted a little bit with population, so we told the commissioners probably need to put that on hold a little bit, but the, the big need that's still there is uh, we do need a new middle school or an additional middle school in the Archdale Trinity area because uh, right now, um, you know, we have 7th and 8th grade at Archdale Trinity Middle, 6th grade at Braxton Craven. Uh, we really need two middle schools, 6-8, and, and if we get to that point, we'd have a new middle school, 6-8, and then Archdale Trinity Middle would be changed back to 6-8 because there are some things that are going to have to be done at Braxton Craven over, uh, over time if we're going to use it for, for a long period of time much more. But um, really need that. That's a great community up there. And, and we really need to kind of get things set where one middle school feeds each high school. Uh, the community up there has been very good to us and, uh, been, and worked with us well with that Braxton Craven, Archdale Trinity Middle School combo to get through the middle school years. But um, what some people don't know is we already have the land. That land for that school, that middle school up there, was donated to the school system several years back. So uh, we've we have the land. Mm -hmm. We just need to move forward with that project, and and um, I, I feel that project we will we will uh, move forward towards that in the coming years, and it will be exciting time for that community. And and um, I appreciate everybody's patience in, in uh, that part of the county because. Um, they really worked hard with us. So that meeting was a great meeting. I, I, like I said, I enjoy it. I consider the commissioners, um, they've been very good to me. I consider them uh, mentors of mine, uh, just like I do this board. Uh, I enjoy the relationship with this board here, the Board of Education and the commissioners. And, and I believe we're working hard to continue to develop that positive relationship based on trust and transparency. So I, I enjoy those events because I enjoy um, sharing our needs, but also in the public, you got to be, be able to tell why those are your needs. All right, so the county commissioner meeting was last week, and so now we'll jump back into the current week. Uh, a little bit of the change in the schedule because of the advanced ed visit that we talked about, the board meeting, which typically would be on a Monday evening, this week was held on Wednesday. Uh, another great meeting in terms of recognition, so many good things um, going on in the school district, a lot of business to take care of. One of the things that got uh, rolled out that you might want to share with the community is uh, this idea of High School Saturday Academy. Can you just tell us a little bit about uh, what that's about? Yeah, I, let me let me stop you there, Tim, before you go, uh, to, before we get into the Saturday Academy, uh, or Saturday, the Saturday Academy at high school level. I just want to speak to one thing. You, you said it's been a busy week. We moved our board meeting to Wednesday. I think sometimes people don't realize the board members' roles but uh, when you move a board meeting into a Wednesday night from a Monday night and they've scheduled it all, all you know, they're used to coming on Monday nights and they've rearranged their schedules and all, um, it's just really refreshing for, for them to, or to see the reaction from them. When, you know, obviously we announced this a ways back to move it to Wednesday night, but I don't know many people know the board was over here a long time Wednesday, which was a different day of the week for meetings, obviously, it, and it started at um, – what well, we started at 3.30. Right. So they were here from 3.30 until about 9 o'clock, I guess, uh, I guess when we kind of finished um, Wednesday night. But they were also here Monday. They met with Advanced Ed. And, and, and so I just want to say thank you to them publicly because, you know, they do have their work schedules and have to work around a lot of things. And, and I've said this before, we've had several special things come up and, and they've scheduled special meetings so we can move through some issues in the past uh, 33 months. So I just appreciate their flexibility because they have always been about helping us get things done. But now to the Saturday Academy. Um, one thing we're going to try, a little little pilot program, Tim. Um, we're going to, on um, Saturdays, it's about six Saturdays out before the EOCs, before exams at the high school level, we're going to have a um, um, like a half-day session for students at each high, it's going to be at each high school. There's going to be a um, review center, uh, enrichment center for the three end of course, area, end of course test areas, math one, English two, and biology. Teachers will be there. And we've planned it out so every high school have 
have uh, that set up. And it's, uh, I want to say it's six Saturdays out, but the schools are now going to start advertising it, just trying to get some extra help in those areas, which are very critical areas, and see how it works and, and see if, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a pilot. We're going to try it, and um, the board was very supportive of it. We'll see where, where it goes. Um, the principals were very supportive of it. We started talking to them about it about several, several weeks ago. With, was there interest? There was interest from our high school principals. So um, we're going to try it at the high school level. We've done some other things extra instructionally at the elementary and middle grade levels this year. So I'm um, very excited to see how that turns out. Okay. Uh, I mentioned uh, just a moment ago the awards and recognitions at the board meeting. Of course, we do those at every meeting. And, we, uh, and Wednesday was no exception. We recognized a spelling bee champ and some wrestling champs. We recognized uh, Hopewell Elementary as a lighthouse school. And, of course, our star three students would do that with each session. But then we also um, had three of our schools that were recipients of some money, the North Carolina Tobacco Trust Fund grant was presented uh, to three of our schools, and uh, that's a huge uh, benefit to our school system. We just talk about that a little bit. That was exciting to see. Um, and Nathan Beasley from Eastern Randolph High School, Caroline Sheffield from Trinity High School, and Amy Kidd from Providence Grove High School. They applied for these grants and they received them. They were all right at five thousand dollars. So you know, you're sitting there, as superintendent, and you're seeing fifteen thousand dollars in grants being awarded. Uh, it was a pretty formal presentation uh, by a representative from the group, uh, from the Tobacco Trust group. Um, and, and it's just, um, you know, they all have different projects you're using the money for. Um, and it was just exciting. I, I guess when the presentation was over, um, we have so many different programs in schools that, that, that are going at kids' interest, you know, and trying to reach out to kids' special interest. And I just kind of, as, as the individual that came to do the presentation, walked away, I thought, you know, agriculture education is, is, is alive and pretty, pretty strong in this school system. And, and um, it's amazing the interest the kids have towards this and, and uh, it's exciting their high level of interest. So um, mm -hmm. I was very proud of those teachers. Um, you know, whenever you pursue a grant, you do a lot of work on the front end for it mm -hmm. and you never know if you're going to get it. So it's always good to see them rewarded mm -hmm. and their kids uh, being rewarded for, for the receipt of that, those grants and what those funds will do for their programs. So Dr. Ganey, uh, right down the road from here on the campus of Randolph Community College is our early college, uh, non-traditional high school. Uh, and I know that tomorrow, which is Saturday, um, it is interview day, the annual interview day for the next school year. A number of applicants as the interest and the awareness of this early college program continues to grow in our community. Uh, we all are excited about it and I know you are. So I would just give you this opportunity then just to talk a little bit about the early college. Well, you know, when I, when I came here, it was, it was already there. Um, the previous two uh, leaderships were very involved in that and um, um, it, it, was, it, it was developed, it was planned out very well and I have only the highest uh, compliments for um, the previous two uh, superintendents and, and their leadership through that development um, of the programs. But uh, it is a thriving school. Um, I was just over there yesterday, Tim, visiting, and um, um, students have different interests. There were, there were, some of them were working on course selections for next year. April Thompson's done a phenomenal job um, leading the school in her first year. There's just an excitement there. Um, you know, you walk down the hall, you get to talk to students, just like at all other schools, but there's, there's just, they're in that smaller environment and um, you get to talk to them about what their plans are. Um, you know, in the, yesterday I had a conversation with a child talking about scholarship money. I had another child talking about um, what was going on with his recruitment into the military. Um, and it's just exciting to see that small atmosphere thriving so much. I'll tell you, one of the things that caught my attention at the end of my first year, so that would have been the 13-14 school year, mm -hmm. I went to their um, uh, senior awards ceremony. And I sat down and before the ceremony started, I looked, I had the program and I looked on the back and it had every one of the graduates and beside their name was what they were going to do. And it was just interesting. What I walked away from there and I've been watching it ever since is every child there had a plan for what they were doing after high school. Mm -hmm. And you know, it was, you know, I'm going to, going to college, I'm going to community college, um, you know, I'm going to the military and the recruiter was right there getting ready to present 
at that assembly for them. Um, it's just really exciting, the uh, focus there. Um, it, it speaks well to that was that the early college initiative across the state of North Carolina is a, is a very positive initiative. And um, I, just, I just applaud this board and previous boards and previous superintendents here for supporting the idea and letting it become a reality here because um, to me there's a, there's a right educational environment for, for every child and um, that one really grabs the children over there and it's exciting to see the level of interest uh, as you say with the interview day coming so uh, I, only, I, I only foresee that school getting better and better in, in performance. Okay. So as we sit here now, it's the middle of March. I guess you could say we're coming down the home stretch of, of another great school year. Um, you know, there's just so many things going on in the schools, whether it's cultural arts events. We had um, the Read Across America that I know you and many others in our school system and community participated in. This morning I was out at a career day at URA Middle School and there's sporting events. There's a lot going on. And I've done this in some previous interviews, but I just kind of want to turn you loose. Now, when, when you're out in the schools, you're at events, you're seeing things, you're experiencing the school, what are some of the things that you're, that you're seeing and enjoying? Well, I've um, been in a lot of classrooms in, this week at three of the high schools on school visits. And, you know, we are getting close to heading that last nine weeks. Uh, we're close to spring break. Mm -hmm. um, Spring, um, we, we feel like we're past the winter weather and um, kids are excited. But what's caught my eye this week at the high schools, the three I've been at, I've been at Southwest, Trinity, and the early college, uh, is the, the students are very engaged. They're very engaged and they're, um, uh, and I've seen that all year in all our schools. Um, uh, I remember the week before the holiday break, the schools I went in that week, the level of engagement, knowing there was a big holiday coming back in December, uh, was very impressive, and I see that all over. But um, the school system, but um, you know, uh, we're gonna this next nine weeks will go quick. There'll be a lot of recognitions for children, um, and then we'll get to the high school graduations, and um, we're gonna close this thing out in a positive way. Um, I'm I'm just excited for the efforts I see. I see a lot of teachers today at Trinity High School. I spoke to several teachers, and just. You know, there was a, there was a positive um, about what was going on. Um, I just can't, you know, when you walk away and you talk to teachers that are that positive, and, and like I say, it was at all three places I was today, you know kids are getting uh, a good deal in that classroom. Uh, you just know it. So um, I'm just looking forward to seeing how the year finishes. I want to finish strong. Um, hope everybody enjoys the spring break coming a week from now, and, and hope we have some good weather for everybody to kind of relax a little bit and head into that last nine weeks and, and head into high school graduations and the end of year recognition ceremonies, which are always exciting. Everybody has them at all levels and you get to see some exciting and amazing things children have accomplished throughout the year. You know, Dr. Ganey, as I was reading uh, some of the star three recognitions at the board meeting the other evening, there was a comment that really struck me when one of the, the uh, 12th graders, there was a comment that was written about him that said, when he walks across that stage to get his diploma, there's going to be a lot of sad teachers. Um, and I, don't, I, I thought about that, that you've, you know, you're 12 years in school and, and then you move on to other and greater things. Um, as you think about those 12th graders who are now are, are closing out their 12 years and embarking upon that next phase of their life, what do you tell a 12th grader? What do you tell someone who's who's getting ready to finish it up, at least at this level, and move on to that next level, whatever it may be. Well, you know, every, every, every child is going to, or I would say kids will take different uh, paths when they graduate. But I think the biggest thing over, over my 23 years in this business and, and thinking back to going through the school um, experience ourselves mm -hmm. is I think we were all uh, in one way or another encouraged to dream about what we wanted to do as we grew up and we entered uh, the adulthood and the work world, uh, dream about what experience we wanted educationally beyond high school uh, or did we want to go straight to work and, and so the thing I would tell, uh, tell these children as they're graduating from high school is don't stop dreaming about your future. Right. You know in many ways um, you know I don't think I'm looking at 
the Randolph County school system the way it's going to be five years out. I have a, I think it, I think it will only keep getting better, and I don't think the present state is what we're seeing. So I, to say that as superintendent, I don't keep dreaming about what's going on with this system and what can go on for these kids and what can go on for this community. Uh, to say I don't dream would be wouldn't be correct because I do even at even at 46 years of age. So I, I think that's. Uh, if I could tell them one thing, keep dreaming about your future, keep dreaming about what you want to do, and, and keep believing that there's there's options out there for you, because there are. There are. If they want them, they're out there for them. And so, um, you know, graduation was always a fun time, and, and as, as you said, it was also, uh, it was fun time to see the children, they had made it, and, and then the excitement about what was going, where they were going next, but it also, it, it's kind of, you hate to see the kids go in one way, because you know you're you're proud of them you're excited and you've been working with them so long and teachers and principals at school level and all but then again you, you just you want to see what's the next stage for their life and 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 it is fun in this in this business to watch them go from you know kindergarten all the way up uh, i had a uh, staff member tell me they watched star three the other night from a different perspective and this was somebody who was at school level and they're now in a different role in a different school but they had been in one of our, uh, in a different school zone earlier in their career. Mm -hmm. And some of the middle school and high school children being recognized, they remembered them from their other role. And, and they were very proud to see, mm -hmm. wow, those children have continued to excel. And, and so it, you never know, even a star three, you never know what anybody out there is noting. I, I see these children get these awards and I see them out in schools and it's, you know, you see them out in school and like, well, I'm not your principal, but I know something about you. I know something exciting about you. I saw you get recognized. Mm -hmm. And I know this school thinks a lot of you because you were nominated as a star three student. So um, that's what's exciting about this business. And one of the things, back to your first thing about advanced ed, um, one of the things they mentioned, which, you know, Tim, we can talk about academic performance we can talk about budgets we can talk about you know resources and all but you know all that's great but if people don't care about each other mm -hmm. then then the value of all of that really doesn't ever get to where it should get yeah. and and i heard advanced ed one of the things they mentioned i think in their summary comments was i think they call it a caring culture mm -hmm. and that really made me feel good yeah. because i i I know how good people have been to me in this community and in this, in my family, in this community and in this school system, which is a community. Um, and so to know that that stood out kind of globally across this school system to a group of outside evaluators, that, that really made me feel good. You know, the other stuff we've got to work on and we're going to work on it. And we're going to get better. But I would tell you without that piece of it, you may be limited where how high you can go you know, as far without the caring piece. So. Okay, well, graduation and the end of the school year is on the horizon, but we're not there yet. We still have a, a number of weeks left in the school year, a lot of teaching and learning uh, that will be going on. And um, so once again, Dr. Ganey, I want to thank you for taking the time to share with me and share with the community uh, from your perspective some of the good things uh, that are happening. Again, we thank Randolph Communications for giving us this opportunity each month. Um, this is our update for, for March of 2016, and we are looking forward to seeing you again in April. Thank you so much.